Hello, welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to be showing you how to make bouncing rays. Ooh, so as you can see here are some examples of uh, variable length bouncing lasers, and they look pretty nice, don't they? So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating um, a chain of ray casts. So here in the bottom left, represented by this blue line, are going to be our ray casts. We're going to bounce them at a wall, and we want them to bounce off at a normal and essentially what that means is that the normal is the perpendicular to the wall using that function we're going to um, call the bounce function which will return a bounced vector 2 and that is what we're going to set our next raycasts cast 2 at um, in addition to moving the raycast position to the uh, to the collision position as you can see that's what the normal does it makes sure that the angle that it the angle of incidence is cut in half, and we're also going to update the positions of the raycasts. So here back in Godot, I want to create the initial laser node, um, just make it a node 2D, save it somewhere, and as a child we want to have the initial ray, so I'm going to create a raycast 2D, and we want to have a line 2D for the graphical component of this, um, this cool little laser. What we're going to essentially be doing is we're just going to be adding a different point. Um, on every single collision. And we're going to have an end particle 2D node, which is going to be set to wherever the laser ends to add a little bit of particle flare to it. So that's our end. So over here, we're in our script. Um, we, what we essentially want to do is we want to define some variables. So there we have a sender variable, which would be the player, which would be the parent. We're going to have a variable for the bounces, for the number of bounces. Um, we're going to have a max length variable, which would be the length that the raycast would go to before it um, just gave up checking to see if there's a collision. We also have a max cast 2, which is going to be updated on every single bounce, and this is going to be essentially the vector that the raycast will check to, which is cast 2. And we have a rotation, which will point towards the mouse's position. We're also going to create an array of lasers, which will essentially be an array of raycasts that are calculated each frame to check for collisions. And so in our ready function, um, we're going to append our initial laser. Then we want to initialize more lasers, or more bounces. Yeah, more raycasts equivalent to the number of bounces. That's essentially what it does. It duplicates our raycast node and appends it to our array variable. Then we want to calculate the max cast 2. Then we want to set our cast 2 to our laser's cast 2. Make sure to set our line 2D as top level to make sure it doesn't move along with our parent's position. Then, every single frame, which is our process function, we're going to get the rotation to the mouse, we're going to update that to the rotation value, we're going to clear all of our points in our line from our previous frame, and then we're going to set our line's first position, our first point, to uh, its position. Then, make sure to set the max cast to, again, I'm going to update it, to make sure it rotates along with the rotation, because we just changed the rotation prior in that line over there. Then, we're going to loop, to, loop through our array, which is our laser's array, and for each raycast in this laser array, we're going to get our collision points. We also have an index variable to figure out the index that we're on in this laser array. Make sure we set our cast 2 equals to our max cast 2 that we just figured out. Then, if this raycast is colliding, we want to make sure we add a point to our line at the collision point. We're going to get the collider, and you can call your damage function here. Now is where we actually update our um, cast 2 for our next possible raycast. So we're going to get our raycast collision normal. And remember, we want to bounce this collision normal, which is our inputting, which is our input um, of our max cast 2. We want to bounce it off of the normal. We're going to set max cast 2 to that new value. And w if this is a, not our last raycast, we want to set our next raycast, so essentially the next one um, in our la laser's array, to the collision position. If not, we would set our end particles to that position. Then, if we are not colliding at all, we're going to add another point, essentially. Essentially, we're just going to move it straight ahead. We're going to take our global position, and we're going to add the max cast 2 vector to it, which is just going to move it straight ahead. Then, what we're going to do is we're going to add this whole node as a child of the player, because we want this whole thing to move along the player, and we want it to work right next to the player. So I have a player scene, which already has a bunch of code related to the movement and all. You can look through it. Um, and then in our laser scene, we're going to make sure that our laser raycast is enabled. This is a pretty big thing, or else it's not going to detect any collisions. So then after that, all we do 
So we just verify this on the player and we run our scene and then we should detect collisions happening. Pretty nice, is it not? So this is just our project. Um, don't worry about the fact that it doesn't deal damage yet. That was an error, which was fixed later. Turns out um, our laser collision mask was a bit off. So make sure your collision masks are right. So what I'm doing now is I'm just changing the color of our line 2D to make it a little bit glowy. Um, to do this, you can go to your raw values and set a value above one, and this will just make it extra bright. This will go above the 255 um, color cap usually. And I'm also gonna make the caps round, which would not make them like super rectangular and our pivot points, essentially places where our line 2Ds um, intersect with uh, walls, are kind of circular. Now make sure you add a world environment to your main scene, not to your laser, and turn on the standard glow stuff. You know, make sure you turn on your canvas mode and uh, turn on the glow and uh, add some strength and intensity. You know, you can completely change this depending on your own projects, but after we run the project, you'll see that it now glows a little bit. Pretty cool. Here's some examples. Um, and as you can see here uh, for that poor spider, it has been mauled to death with a laser. All right. and. Here is a little boss that I've worked on. Uh, it does a pretty good job at killing them, arguably a little bit too well, but uh, you can see that it does really, really nice. Now is we're going to work on the dust part of the project, and uh, which is our end particles, and essentially this is just going to be where the particles are going to reach the end or where the laser is going to connect with the ground at the very end and the intention here is just to create some dust particles you know are some you know it's it's just a basically a particle 2d node if you know how to work with particles that's essentially all that is there's not really much to say here uh, it's just you can watch me make the particles As I'm finishing up, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please make sure to join our Discord uh, on the game that we've been working on, which is Dungeon Rogues. As you can see, here's our little dust particles. Looks beautiful, doesn't it?